Okay, the, the first effect I'm going to talk about is a shader for uh, refractive and subsurface scattering ice crystals. I want the result to look something like these photos. This is a picture of a fluorite crystal and it exhibits very interesting uh, lighting behaviors when it's lit from behind. You can see here that the light scatters inside the crystals and comes, comes out in interesting colors and it also has a high specular value when the light reflects off the surface. So I'm going to demonstrate a system for uh, recreating this effect. Um, however, I want to restrict what's, uh, what techniques I use to create this. I don't want to use transparency. Let's take a look at transparency in Unity. When we look at these cubes, which are currently opaque, they sort correctly. But if I switch the rendering mode to transparent, you can see that they're now sorting incorrectly because transparent objects sort per, per object rather than per pixel and you can't tell which one is in front. So transparency is out because I know I'm going to have a lot of overlapping polygons. The next technique I could use is refraction. However, I want to save refraction for key objects in my scene. I don't want to have the entire scene refracting. I think that would be over the top and um, I want to avoid that on the entire background. Here's a look at the shader on this refractive surface. This is in Shader Forge. And these selected nodes here at the bottom are what's controlling the refraction. So in terms of in terms of a shader, it's quite simple, but in terms of calculation, it's expensive. If you have many overlapping refractive surfaces, they all have to calculate, and uh, it reduces your frame rate. So I don't want to have this everywhere. So let's look at creating a custom lighting model from scratch in Shader Forge. So I start with the dot product of the normal surface and the light direction, which is the standard lighting algorithm for Lambert lighting. I'll plug this straight into the custom lighting and you see we get a hotspot on the front of the object wherever the light is. However this ignores the light color and it ignores the distance or attenuation of the light so we need to add those in. So this is a node to calculate the attenuation and this one includes the color and if we multiply these by the dot product it will darken it and so now the light falls off as the point light moves away from the surface. So this is close to the Lambert lighting model. Now the dot product gives us a number between 0 and 1 uh, which lights the surface from black to white. However, instead of just using black and white, we could use a texture to look up pixels at specific points. So I'm going to create a texture called a light ramp, and I'm going to use this dot product to select pixels within that texture instead of simply selecting numbers 0 to 1. So let's look at an appropriate texture. You'll notice it's very wide. Uh, this is 256 pixels by 16 tall. And I'm just going to put in a simple black and white gradient, which will recreate the, the lighting that was produced from the dot product. Let's put that texture in and have a look. Now first of all you'll notice it's glitched. There's a, a dark spot on the front and the texture is repeating as it travels over the object. So we need to change the textures repeat mode or wrap mode from repeat to clamp and that will fix that. But you'll also notice that the, the texture is only showing up on the front of the sphere so we need to remap the dot product. The dot product gives us values from minus one to plus one depending on whether we're behind the light or facing the light. So let's remap those from minus 1 to 1 into 0 to 1, which is the values of the UVs in the texture. So now we should see the entire texture wrapping around the mesh. There it is. Now let's look at what happens if we add some bands into this texture. So here's a light band added on the left side of the texture, which is the dark side of the model, uh, the side that's away from the point light. So now you'll see that there's now a bright highlight behind the model. And this concept can be expanded uh, by adding many, many ridges and bands into the light. So if you look at the image in the bottom right here, this shows the lighting ramp which being, is being used at the moment. You'll see it's got many dark and light bands on the right, which is the side facing the point light. And on the left, you'll see that it doesn't fade to black it fades to a light blue color with some with some more bands in that. So let's look at what happens when the light travels behind the object. So now that is very simply um, 
simulating light scattering inside the object and uh, changing color as the material absorbs certain colors. Let's look at what happens when I add a normal map to this. So the, the impact of a normal map on this is very dramatic. The normal map changes what were simple radial bands into much more complex, interesting shapes. And now we get something that, that resembles a crystal. And you'll notice as the light travels behind, we get the interesting blue scattering. Now this normal map is generated in Modbox. Modbox has a, a primitive called the tiling plane, which is very good for making these kind of normal maps. You simply create a tiling plane and paint some random surfaces into it. Use the scrape tool to get some nice detail. And uh, after about half an hour of scraping and sculpting, you should get something nice like this. And this is the mesh used to generate the normal map that you're seeing in Unity now. So this is the um, diffuse color, which is painted by hand in Photoshop by, by basically following the ambient occlusion map from, from Modbox. And this is the specular. And notice that the specular is very speckled and spotty, which creates a nice um, speckled highlight, which looks like a rough surface. And let's take a look at this in-game. So you'll notice on the back wall behind the lighting, we get a lot of white speckled highlights. We get nice banding as the light travels through the scene and the, the lighting ramp is moving across the surface. And then we also get very nice backscattering or subsurface scattering when the light travels behind a surface. The next effect I want to talk about is ice sublimation. So this is a video of dry ice sublimating, which means it's um, changing directly from a solid into a gas by passing the liquid phase. Uh, so dry ice is frozen carbon dioxide and this is happening um, when a, a chunk of dry ice has been immersed in warm water and so it's very rapidly converting to gas and billowing out and we see a lot of turbulence and we see uh, that it pours along the surface but that's because it's happening on earth um, and there's a high a highly dense atmosphere and high gravity. So I want to see what sublimation would be like in space because my game is set in Europa. So here are some pictures of Comet 67P sublimating as it approaches the sun. And we can see that the, the vapor cloud coming off it is, is very fine and uh, it's emitting directly away from the surface in all directions. So because there's almost no gravity, it doesn't fall back to the comet. And because there's a, uh, almost no atmosphere, it has very little turbulence. So I need an effect which is somewhere in between these two, uh, the dry ice on Earth and the uh, water ice in space. Now I know I can't use um, particles for this because I want it to respond correctly to lighting. So I've set up a scene here in Unity with multiple planes. and These planes have got textures which are scrolling. Now planes respond correctly to lighting. If I move the point light around you can see that uh, these are lit correctly, which wouldn't have worked with particles. And the other downside to particles as well is that I want all of this effect to emit away from the surface. And that's difficult to do with particles because my ice caves are going to have surfaces in every direction and I would need some kind of a, a vector field to steer the particles. Whereas with polygons, <clears throat> I can very easily sculpt them following the path of the caves such that their UVs always point the same way. And you can see here in this test scene, I've overlapped three layers of uh, polygons. So let's take a look at the shader that's animating these UVs. Uh, first of all, you'll notice that the vertex color channel is used for opacity. And that's so that they can have a static opacity, which fades out towards the top of the polygon, as well as an animated opacity, which scrolls with the texture. So the vertex colors are fixed whereas the texture is being uh, scrolled. Um, if we look up at the top here, the top part of the shader, you'll also see there's a random starting offset, which causes the layers to um, jump a little bit when the scene starts so they don't overlap perfectly. And that just reduces the repetition. This part of the shader down here is the V component of the scrolling. In other words, the vertical component. And it's very simple because all it does is it scrolls up. So it very slowly scrolls upwards. You can see it's uh, using the time 
and uh, it's passing that directly into the V coordinate of the UVs. The rest of the shader is the U animation on the UVs, which is the horizontal animation. And that is oscillating left and right using a sine wave. But rather than simply oscillating, it's also warping slightly, uh, which is influenced by the world position. And this creates an effect such that adjacent pixels are not at the same phase of the sine wave, and it appears to wobble left and right. This polygon shows the vertex colors that are being used as part of the transparency. And you see that there's a gradient falling from white to black as we go higher up, which causes the smoke to fade off. But in addition, there's also a black vertex at the bottom of the mesh. And this prevents a hard edge from being revealed when the polygons cross uh, the floor. So instead of it immediately appearing uh, with a white pixel, the smoke fades in from the bottom and that removes the hard edge. Incidentally, here's how the texture that's being used for this smoke was made. It's, it's very simple to do this in Photoshop. If you create an image that's a power of two and then use the filter render clouds, which is a Perlin noise um, filter, um, the texture will be seamlessly tiling. So as long as your image is a power of two, the Perlin noise will tile perfectly. So render some clouds until you get a nice looking distribution of black and white. And then do filter render difference clouds and repeat that over and over with control F many times and it'll difference the new layer with what was already there which creates a very interesting sort of a plasma appearance which is perfect for smoke and uh, particle effects. And so this is what it looks like in game and you see that whatever surface the light approaches the smoke appears to be drifting away from that surface. And the two layers is sufficient to disguise any tiling and create sufficient depth so that it looks like it's, it's completely surrounding the player. And that's it, thanks for watching.